Welcome to the venue of the most talk about debate. As you can see, people tripping in from my right and from my left. Observers, students, theologians, and even philosophers. Wow. You too can join us on your television station as we watch and debate on this first topic, righteousness and God's standard. Is it possible in this our present generation? Wow. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, sir, and our accurate timekeeper. Once again, my name is Chief Logba Logba. Uh, I know uh, a minute and a half is not enough for me to expatiate my conviction that righteousness is not possible in this generation due to numerous uh, negative effects. Uh, if a critical um, appraisal is conducted on how many people suffer evil just because they try to live a righteous life, I am very sure, I am quite sure that the figure will be very, very alarming. Sir, a lot of people are jobless today just because they refuse to practice unrighteousness which is expected of them in an unrighteous world and because of this they are wallowing in poverty in penury our incorruptible judges do you know how many people suffer in prison cell just because they stand for truth and righteousness righteous people do not enjoy this world only the unrighteous will do because the world itself is unrighteous. I want to tell you, sir, that many people in our offices, the government parastatals, and the people in high positions today are able to get those positions because they falsify their ages. If they had not done that, they would be jobless by now. How would they be able to pay their children's school fees in this present age of expensive educational system? Mr. Chairman, sir, I want to say that righteousness cannot thrive in this corrupt generation, in this corrupt world, where we have corrupt leaders, deceitful churches, and even our offices are unprincipled. In a world where you join them, if you cannot win them, Mr. Chairman, sir, and a panel of judges, I want to say categorically to all and sundry that righteousness is not profitable in this generation, not in this world, not in this age. And God himself should understand this. This is my submission. Thank you, our uncompromising panel of judges for this little time to convince you that a righteous living is not negotiable as far as God is concerned. That is why my opponent's funds are baseless and absorbed. The reasons are simple. The people mentioned were born in a corrupt world, drunk and ate corrupt food, schooled in a corrupt environment, were taught by corrupt teachers. But before I remain that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. The Father, righteous living, is not emulated in our world, does not mean that we should lose the sense of our purity. We should not forget that we are passengers. Passing through this world, we are sojourners. We will soon go back home where righteousness is the entry password. Righteousness is the key point. If we forget the kingdom because of the unrighteousness of the world, what is our reward? I want to state again that righteous men have lived in and passed through this world undoubted. Joseph lived a righteous life. He never lied when brother did. He never fortified Abidavid when other did. He never fornicated when it was free of charge. He stand for purity in a corrupt and compromising world. Took him to the top. What about Daniel? and his companion, Sidra Meza Karabed Migo. They are uncompromising for righteous life, made them to stand out 
and took them to the top. Even in a strange land, it's rewarding. On first, and surely he never. People like Ananias and Savira compromised. They became dubious and ended up destroying themselves on half and in heaven. So, why can't you emulate people like Noah, who was attested to be the only righteous man in his generation? People like Lot, who was singled out out of destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says, Go we separate the righteous to eternal life and your righteous to eternal destruction. I appeal to you. I beg of you. Will you all stand and live a righteous life in this generation? It is possible. It is rewarding and fulfilling. In the long run, stop bribery and corruption. Stop embezzlement and stealing. Stop buying answers to examination of questions. Denying your parents from doing so. And by so doing, if I can live a righteous life, you can live a righteous life. The society can live a righteous life. The church live a righteous life. The government live a righteous life. The world become a righteous and will live heaven and heart. Ladies and gentlemen, from the panel of judges here, we realize having the speeches of both speakers, I think it is now clear to all that righteous living is possible in this generation. We were told that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any man. It means if any home, any organization, and any religion will not allow righteousness in their lives, sin will just destroy them. Any nation where righteousness is not their way of life, sin is bound to destroy them. Any organization and nation where they allow righteousness to die, then corruption will be on the rise. So having had that from our second speaker that righteousness is a way of life and we must live it. It means God is not moved by only few who live a righteous life. God is not intimidated by only few on one like Noah who will live a righteous life. Therefore, who will be the Lord of this generation? that be singled out of destruction because of a righteous life. It costs nothing to destroy all and save one if there is only one righteous man in this world. But our God is love. God wants all to be saved through righteous living. So, who will be the righteous man in that family, in that home, in that office, in that church and society? Let us all rise up to say, Righteous living as God's standard is possible in this generation. God bless you all. I want to know if, uh, if you have ever told a lie, either to escape any confrontation, or to excuse yourself from an embarrassing matter. My brother, no one without an ugly past. I have told lies before. But now, never again, because I am now in Christ. Uh, all right, I want to ask another question. But this time, you have to be very practical. Uh, is it possible for someone to live a righteous life uh, and not tell lie in this generation? Yes, it is possible and very possible. Righteous life is about pure life. 
holy life and very transparent life. Look, it is possible in this generation. If I can live righteous, you can live righteous without telling lies. Then this world will become a better place for us to live in. Ah! Oga! Ah ah! Oga! Why are you talking as if we are not both in this generation? Eh? No one is righteous. And it is not possible to live a righteous life in this our age. Ah! In this world of GSM, and said, GSM that has made it very possible for you to tell lies. Uh, for example, you are at home owing a debt and you don't want the person you are owing to know that you are at home. You need to tell lie that you are not at home so that you can escape uh, uh, being forced to pay. That is called hide and seek lie. Uh, let's come to the business line. Eh? If you don't tell lie, in business, how will you make good money? Good money. Eh? That is called business life. Okay, uh, let's come to the road. Eh? Uh, let's assume you are driving on the main road and you knowingly uh, disobey the traffic light. Uh, and uh, in order to escape arrest or charge of the police, you have to tell lie. Eh? That is called an emergency lie. <laughs> Uh, okay, alright, let's come to the church. The church that we know has a holy place. Even the church will tell lies. Uh, for example, you come late, you don't want your pastor to know what you are doing. That made you come late to church. You need to tell lies. Uh, that is all white lie. <laughs> and you are telling me that it's very possible to live a righteous life in, in this generation. <laughs> it is not possible. <laughs> Hey, you know it! <laughs> you see, Chief, be it white lies, fabricated lies, emergency lies, assume lies, or whatever I get used to qualify the lies. The Bible says, All liars shall find their path in the lake of hell fire. If you don't want to go to the lake of hell fire, then stop lying. Be truthful. Be transparent. Righteous. Now we were in examination hall, and I don't know a question I asked you. Is it bad? Is it righteous? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? That is where it starts. Except to give your life to Jesus Christ, you can never live a righteous life because He is the righteousness of God in man. So give your life to Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. You are welcome, brother. You are welcome, sir. Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. It says, Do not exact more than what is appointed unto you. Hmm. The Bible says, Be content with your wages, your salary, be satisfied. Don't do any legitimate business and do best business. Avoid it. We are can't come up eating up our lives. Stop shooting other people. And the Bible says, do not accuse anyone falsely. If you can emulate this, then we are on the right path. Like I told him, it begins with Jesus. Have we all given your life to Jesus? Chef, that's your woman. You like it again? I give you a little bit. That's it, Papa. Go ahead, you know what you're doing. That's it, you know what you're doing. After all. It is it is true, sir. Oh, da bi a shaking shit in here. When you must sort on the coin, could that came a shit in you? Oh, there, that be a shaking paro. Sugar, I did you any kind of muku me. I did you da, who follows on you. Moreover, you are not your baby.
Good morning. How are you, my brother? Fine, sir. How are you, my sister? Fine, sir. Fine, sir. God bless you. Yes, we don't know we will see you in the church today. Mm, actually, I came to pray. Uh, uh, it means you preach in the first service. Today. Yes, I did. Oh. And it just ended. Yeah. And right now, I'm going back to the headquarters to preach at the second service. <laughs> we missed. We really missed. Uh, anyway, uh, your message is always a blessing to our family. We thank God. Uh, especially on the issues of life. Oh, all praise to God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank um, you. Uh, sir, it has changed my life tremendously. Mm. Uh, sir, you won't believe that I was once a dubious lawyer. And that was my lifestyle. Mm. I don't have time for my wife or take care of her. Um, but now, <laughs> I have changed. <laughs> and she's now enjoying the dividends at present. Hey. Uh, you can see smile on her face. <laughs> <laughs> we are now enjoying our marriage. Mm. Hey, she can tell the story better. Mm. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Amen. We thank God for using you in our generation. Amen. In fact, my husband is not born again. Uh -oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, do you want to tell me that I'm not born again before now? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, God bless you. Amen. You know, we bless your home. Amen. And you will enjoy your marriage. There shall be no intruder. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For glory, crown will be joy for you. Amen. God bless you. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Good morning, sir. How are you, my brother? Fine, sir. God bless you. Amen, sir. And, sir, I sent you a text message. You don't mean it? Yes, sir. About the issue of life. Although we have answered so many questions on the issue of life, there are many of them. It means you have not answered yours. No, I didn't get any reply, sir. <sighs> so what is your question? Where is Pastor Nathaniel? He and his wife are still with the counselors. Better. Better. They had better remain with the counselors because they will never be inside this church again. If at this stage they are not sure of being born again. What an embarrassment. A serving minister in this church went out for another call to repent. What an embarrassment. Even if they have any confessional sin to repent of, they could have dropped down with them we ministers and we would have prayed for them. The both of them went out for the altar call. And the whole congregation was looking at them. Who oh, they made a full of us. Point of correction, my brother. The term girlfriend is not acceptable in the Christian fold. Eh? Fiancé is better. Besides, in response to your questions, the fact that you have known her parents and they are not well to do. It's not a license for you to put her under your roof without engagement or wedding ceremonies. Can you now see you have been committing fornication all these years? Eh? Ah. For the fact that you sponsor her education and take care of her family is not an excuse for you to use her without appropriate steps taken. Where is God in your equation? Oh. You are among the choir because I saw you singing with them this morning. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm among the choir, sir. Then you must go and substitute yourself immediately and start singing on that holy altar. Go and repent speedily and restitute by return the lady to her parents until you have done the right thing. Then, Begin a seven days fasting and prayer of forgiveness and mercy because I can see you are filled with remorse and shame to repent. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Has she aborted any pregnancy for you before? Ma'am, we both realized we don't need the baby. So she aborted three times. Is she in the choir too? Yes, she is, sir. Hmm. Then, 
tell her the repentance process involves both of you, but separately. After that, report back. Hope your parish pastor didn't know about this. Yes, sir. He knows we are dating, sir. Dating? Dating is unacceptable in the Christian fold. Ah. It's okay. You can go. Thank you, sir. Ah. Oh, God. See what we have among our calling stars in this generation. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm fine, sir. God bless you. Amen, sir. I want to see you, sir. See me? Yes, sir. Hope no problem. Then get approval from your pastor and get my number from him to call me. Ah, daddy. My pastor, he won't give me. Why? Pastor Nathaniel, you cannot miss out in second service with us. In fact, you cannot miss out in, in this church again until further notice. If you can stoop so low to go out for altar call. Oh my God. Then, sir, what did we do wrong by going out for altar call? What was wrong about that? A lot, madam. A lot of things were wrong. Don't you realize that you're a minister? But the message touched us and it reveals our sinful nature. Don't just go there. Even if the message touched you as a minister, can't you kneel down where you were and pray? Must you go out? Must you go out? Let me tell you, don't you realize what the Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 17, 1 and 3. He says it is impossible for offense to come, but war unto him whom the offense cometh. But you have been better for a milestone to be hung on his neck and be cast into the sea than you have heard this little war. You have caused the unbelievers and the young believers to begin to ask questions in their mind. You are causing them to sin. I beg your pardon, sir. That is not what the Bible meant there. It is not talking about the people who are repenting from their sin, but of people who are actually committing sin without the act of repentance. I can see you are one of those who, uh, who responded for attack call this morning. Mm, yes, sir. I've got my mind made up. I want to repent. Are you really sure you want to repent? Yes, sir. I want to put a stop to all this mess I found myself in. I want to be cleansed and obtain mercy from the Lord. I want to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Enough is enough. Uh uh. The message this morning eats me hard. I want to put a stop to it. I want to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you really sure you want to repent? Yes. Oh, God bless you, my brother. How are you today? I saw you among those who came out for rededication and not alcohol. During the service, in fact, I salute your courage. God bless you and your wife for taking that decision. Suspended? Why? Okay. Where are you now? Then, see me in my office. Even though the suspension will see old. God bless you. I'll be expecting you. Bye. Suspended. He's a sister from our church. She's also a counselor. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Please excuse me.
Greetings to you, sir. Thank you for allowing your wife to come to our church today. In fact, she has seen the light. <laughs> Don't mention. I do hope you come to our church next week, if you are not busy. Me? I am not a church person. I cannot come to your church. Why, sir? You have to join a fellowship center with the children of God. Oh, no. No, no, no. I cannot go to your church. In fact, I cannot attend any church because the church had failed me. There's nothing they can offer me. No, sir. It's not like that. Anyway, by the time the light of Christ, which your wife has received, permeates this house, definitely you follow her to church one day. I'm so sorry, my sister. I'm so sorry for the day. <sighs> you don't have to bother yourself. Uh, I'm okay for now. I just came to your house just to make a proper follow-up. You mean you won't take anything? Oh, no, no. Thank you, ma. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Maybe next time. Okay. My dear, guess what? I have given my life to Jesus Christ. I am now born again. <laughs> it is not possible. Yes, it is. The message in the church today opened my eyes. It speaks my heart. I have no choice than to give my life to Jesus. Then go and get it back. How do you mean? I said go and get it back. You cannot give your life to Christ and still live under the same roof with me. I have given my life to Jesus. No, you can't. I am born again. I said you can't. I am born again. I said you can't give your life to Jesus. I st Why, sir? If I may ask with due respect. Madam, my wife cannot give her life to Jesus. She cannot be born again. Simple. My dear, why? Why are you treating me like this? Look. I have seen the light. I've given my life to Jesus. I want to go to heaven. Why are you bluffing in the presence of this your so-called sister? You yourself know that you cannot be born again now. You know that you cannot do that. Unless you want to expose me to the whole world and still live under the same roof with me. Go ahead. Go ahead. But remember, you yourself know the consequences of what your action will bring on you and me. Madam, what's going on here? My sister, it's a long story. Then let it out. Be free, madam. My sister, we are fraudsters. I mean, internet fraudsters. And my husband said he can't leave the job because it's lucrative. Hmm. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Hmm. Madam, you have to plead with your husband and stand on a decision to quit for a legal business. I have to invite my pastor to this and you shall be set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Huh. Besides, my sister, my husband cannot perform as a man. What? How do you do it? I mean, how do you cope as a woman? Hmm. He uses his hands or invites some people to do it for me at interval. Hmm. Sometimes he plays me on sedative. What? This is wrong. This is simple. And you allow yourself to be used in this such manner. 
Madam, you need Jesus. In fact, you and your husband, you need Jesus fast to deliver you, save you, and heal you. I have to involve my pastor in this. Huh, please, ma. Please don't tell anyone. Don't inform the police. Please, don't say it anywhere. My sister, I am not a tail bearer. I am just a gospel preacher. Hmm. <sighs> Thank you, my sister. I knew it. I knew it would come to this. Preaching to me to give my life to Jesus. That is why I didn't want her to go to church. No. No. I can't stop this work. I don't want to be poor again. Ah. You are welcome, madam. Yes, sir. I didn't know you are coming today. Besides, your pastor hasn't called me. He didn't know I was coming, sir. How? How then did you get my number? I'm sorry, sir. I got it from his phone. How? While he was talking with his wife, I barged into his office and I brushed through his phone. Then, I can't attend to you until you get his approval. Because you must get his approval to come to me. Meanwhile, you have to excuse me. I have some visitors downstairs. I have a meeting in the boardroom. If you don't mind, we will wait to see data. Hello? Ah, uh, yes, sir. I'm just getting into the compound. Oh, Mrs. Um, Sopplers and the husband, they are just arriving into the compound now. Just arriving? Yes, yes. Are you having a meeting? We have an emergency meeting. Lead them to the auditorium or better still the boardroom. You are welcome. God bless you. All right, all right. I will direct them there, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah. Good afternoon, man. How is Daddy, man? Ah, yes. He said you should meet him at the church auditorium. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you because you called us into the ministry. We thank you for this opportunity. Accept our thanks, O God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You have gathered here to settle the matter that is of heavenly concern. Help us to settle it. Amen. Amen. Give us the Holy Spirit and let there be peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you because of answered the prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. I called you to this emergency meeting because of what happened in your church this morning. And you know the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Pastor Shuko, Pastor Nathaniel said you suspended him this morning, just because he came out for the altar call during the service. Although, I told him the suspicion still stand. But I want to know your rationale behind this. Thank you, sir. It is a simple matter. Since it is obvious that our assistant pastor just repented of his sin, known only to him and his wife this morning, I think they should remain with the counselors for another two 
to three months before allowing them to minister again with us. More so, I find it very, very embarrassing and disgraceful. If they live in sin and minister to the people of God, they deceive us. They make people question our integrity as, as ministers. Their action could cause the young believers and the unbelievers that we are trying to convert to stumble. Mm. Sir, my point is this. If they know that they, they live in sins, they will have confided in us to cancel them and pray for them rather than going out for utter call to repent with the unbelievers we are trying to convert. That is my point, sir. Pastor Nathaniel, you have heard Pastor Super spoken. What is your defense in view of this? Thank you, my father in the Lord, my senior pastor and his wife, and fellow ministers. I thank God for this kind of uh, opportunity. As you all know, there are messages and there are divine messages. Like the one we had this morning. I mean, what is the essence of a message if it did not bring a positive change into our lives? What is the essence of a message if it did not bring a supernatural turnaround in our lives? I mean, if we go to church and the preaching doesn't change us, then why go to church at all? Pastor Nathaniel, yes. you are just beating about the bush. <sighs> Which message did not change you in the church? Or don't you have listening ears? Please go straight to the point and stop being hypocritical. <sighs> my daddy, as I was saying, my wife and I are yet to get over the revelation I saw two days ago. And it goes like this. I have come to take away my own from the pollution of this world before I destroy it. Destroy it? Yes, I will destroy it because the unrighteousness and wickedness in it is too much. Ah! But sir, we spare the church because the church has greatly increased and has spread the gospel all over the world. Yes, the gospel is spreading. The church is increasing. But as they increase, they sin against the Lord. The more the church, the more the atrocities and the unrighteousness among them. And now, the judgment of God will start from the house of God. Judgment from the house of God. <sighs> Sir, if you see hundred righteous in the church, Will you still destroy the church? No. With 100 righteous, I will still spare. <sighs> but sir, what if you find 50 among the church? Will you still destroy the 50? With 50, I will spare. I'm sorry, sir. For the last time, what if we find 20 among the church? Will you still destroy the church? Hmm. 20 righteous. With 20 righteous, I can stay spare. But 20 righteous cannot be found. Have mercy. Have mercy upon the church. Mercy. Mercy. That is what the church has been enjoying. But they have taken the liberty of grace for granted. Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound. Certainly not. Look at this congregation. My sheep 
hear my voice. My sheep, come now. I cannot fight 20 righteous here. What a shame. They all come to the place of worship, but no change in their lives. They come to church, yet they remain a sinner. Can you see why they cannot be raptured if it happens today? Come unto me, everyone who is ready. To repent genuinely, come unto me, so divine grace can come upon you. And that was how it happened. Daddy, I saw myself, my wife, our senior pastor, and fellow ministers, and some members of the church, who did not hear his voice. Busy dancing. They did not hear his voice as a result of their unrighteousness and sin. <sighs> what an affront. Coincidentally, you came in this morning with a message titled The Judgment of God Upon Unrepentant Sinners. Right there, I told my wife, This is a message for us. Because we were yet sinners. I mean, my wife and I still fight and keep malice. And we call ourselves ministers. At times, we refuse to talk to each other for a week or more. How does the two complement? How can we keep malice and say we are going to heaven? <laughs> Sir, we could not continue to hide under a finger when we are not holy before God. Our lifestyle was not what emulating and we could no longer deceive ourselves. We could no longer portray ourselves as holy. Why in what land we are dirty? We were not ashamed to be labeled sinners so we could become saints. <laughs> Sir, the revelation reveals that if Jesus should come today, <laughs> 95% of us will never make him. My fellow ministers, let us stop deceiving ourselves and start calling ourselves ministers. Jesus is no respecter of anyone. Let us repent now before it is too late. <laughs> oh, what is the essence of our dancing and service in the church? Mm -hmm. If we will not go to heaven, go for me. So let us repent now. The revelation is true. The Bible is true. As for me and my husband, we have decided to live right and holy. Come with me.
support me? How many times have I asked you if you are worthy of heaven the way you lead the church? How many times have I confronted you about your way of life not conforming with what you preach? Sir, is it compulsory you be a pastor when you know you don't have the message? <laughs> Madam, why are you talking like this about your husband? Sir, is it by force you preach when you live a spiritually disorganized life like this? Sir, my husband prefers to follow people on Twitter. And read comic novel instead of the Bible. My husband can be on Facebook all the day instead of facing the Bible. <sighs> Sir, it will not be an injustice if after serving God, yet you miss heaven. All because you are living a deceptive life like my husband. Do you know for how long this has been going on? Yes, dear. Do you know everything you said on the movie today was a lie? All your examples and testimony were all lies. Yet you refer to me as a witness to your lies. We have never left the shore of this country, nor been to the embassy. Yet you lie to the congregation. About a day you traveled out of this country. When did we pray for someone that God healed? You will say the car we are using is a gift from somebody. Honey, who is that? Why are you so comfortable telling lies? <laughs> Look, my dear. If you don't motivate each other with such testimony, they will not believe you. They will not assimilate. Look, they will not know how to give you good gift. Church needs such fabricated stories so that they can know how to give you worthy gift. You know, sometimes you to you know, spice it up to ginger their swagger. But my dear, you don't buy respect. You ain't it. Who are you impressing? <laughs> and who are you pleasing? God or man? Even if you are fabricating, do you think those people in the church are fools? Some are intelligent, some are spiritual, while well, some are investigators. Come, Murphy! They will investigate all your lies. When you travel to the places that men sure to investigate, the church minds their own business. All the church wants is miracle. Anyway, anyhow. <laughs> hmm. Oh, Koboki be Masitosi. But just don't make me a witness to all your lies anymore. My dear, you are my wife. Support me. Come for what's work for good your life again. Support me, you are my wife. Support you? No way. I have pledged my allegiance to God. To always be holy, truthful, and righteous. God to do his way. Mr. Help of God, repent! Repent! <sighs> yes, ma'am. All of us need urgent and sincere repentance. You are right, ma'am. Madam, we have been looking for you. Where were you? I was at the restroom, sir, when I saw a pastor coming. No wonder. Mrs. Sakima Shao, this is a pastor's missing. Please, stay away from now. And I'm not staying away. I'm here to settle my case in the presence of our daddy here. I want to be free. Enough is enough. And I see you are not invited. And I have invited myself. I have invited myself to settle my score with God in the presence of our daddy. Uh -uh. Sir, 
My husband is a church goer. But he engaged in extramarital affairs. He didn't have time for me. Despite the fact all the techniques our mommy taught me. So one day, I came to church to pray. And our pastor saw me. He asked me what the problem was. Daddy, I narrated all the story to him. The way I have told her mommy. But little did I know I'm exposing myself to a carnal pastor. Eh? Who has been lusting after me? Daddy. Little did I know. He wanted to take advantage of me. <laughs> Daddy. Little did I know. He was thinking to have an affair with me. And he lied to me. That is why our mom is sitting down here. Was having a fear with men ah, just because she's working in a public office. <laughs> Daddy, I thought I was talking to a spirit filled man who will bring solution to all my problems and pray to God for intervention on my behalf. <sighs> hmm. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt anybody. But I need to voice out quickly because I don't want to perish. Holy God of heaven. Perish? Yes, Daddy. Perish. Apology to our mommy sitting down here. Mommy, please forgive me. I and your husband have been having a fear for the past six years. <sighs> six years? Yes, sir. Daddy, the Holy Spirit rarely operates on that altar. Huh. But today was unique. Your message today hit me hard and made me to come out for water call. I know I'm a sinner, but I want to repent. That was why I came to you this morning when you were going. Daddy, could you believe when I went to his office to take permission to see you? Sir, he wanted to lure me in his office today. Again? I don't know where the courage came upon me to bite him. Daddy, I beat him hard. Hmm. Presently, he's suffering from the bite. Hmm. Sir, I want to repent. But this man here will not allow me. Daddy, I am tired. Please help me. I even wanted to run away from church. But my husband, who doesn't know what is happening, would disagree with me. Please, sir, help me. Help me, I want to be saved. Master Shubo. Sir, I'm not being defensive. I know we are both guilty. But I don't know how you always prevailed over me. Daddy. We have messed up the church office and its environs with immorality. Hmm. See, this man will not let me rest. Hmm. Please help me. Help me, sir. I'm tired. I want to be faithful to my husband. I want to be pure and holy for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Sir, I want to make heaven. Please help me, sir. Help me. For the past six years, Daddy. For the past six years? Yes, sir. Madam, who else knows about this? Who is your witness? Eh? Daddy, secrecy doesn't have witness. Mm. Except God and the devil. Nobody, sir. Nobody. In fact, he won't be never to tell a living soul. He won't be never to tell anybody. But sir. Maybe it's not. Daddy. His phone can bear me witness. This is where it all started. He used to send me his nude pictures. And request for money to. Jesus. Adam, are you identified to this? 
Have you noticed such in your husband's food? <laughs> no, sir. I don't know. He doesn't even allow me access to his phone. Pastor Shippo, is that true? That he won't talk. Because he knows I'm saying the truth. Look at it, sir. No, 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 no. Don't bother to show me. Don't polish my eyes. Daddy, is it a crime to tell my pastor my problem? Daddy, Pastor Shupo took advantage of me. He cheated on me. He oppressed and exploited me. Ah. Daddy, I taught men of God. They are the oracle of God, ambassadors of God, and representatives of God where we are all to look unto. But daddy, they are the ones defiling and destroying us. Mr. Shupo, as our mommy called him, you don't deserve to be called a pastor, but a womanizer, a liar and madam. You don't insult an anointed man of God. Sir? Anointed man of God? This? Ah! Daddy, I've called him names. What is it? 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 Daddy, where is the anointing? With all we have had, even from our godly and innocent mommy here. Mommy, I'm terribly sorry for all my action. I'm sorry for what your husband has put me through. Please forgive me, ma. Have mercy on me. I know. I know that God did not call my husband. I know his ego and his belly did. Because I told him to resign when I had a revelation about him last year. You told the congregation that you are my son. You are not one of my own. When and where did I call you son? Are you one of my sons? No, you are a bastard. Because you pretend to know me and you don't know me at all. Yet, you told people that I called you. You jump the queue. You conspire with the devil like your co-partners in the world that spoiled my name by going into the same level of evil with the world and the devil. You jump the queue. I did not call you. Stop carrying the ministry. I did not commission. Repent. Go to Calvary and locate the way again. Repent genuinely. Daddy, I told him, but he rebuked me. He said the vision was not for him. In fact, he called me all manners of names, like false prophets and hypocrites. I almost queried the integrity of God when my husband said God called him his son. But I know that God is pure. He is holy and righteous. This God is faithful. Shubo, I pray for you. I pray for you at all times. <laughs> Pastor Shubo, I leave you in the hands of God because I don't know what else to say. The only question on my mind right now is that who really should be suspended? Is it you or Pastor Nathaniel that has genuinely repented? Or you that led a deceptive and hypocritical life? No human approval. No divine approval. You have not removed the being in your eyes. Yet, 
you see spare in another man's eyes. You have not made yourself right before God. Yet you want to be right before people. You can't give what you don't have. Teachers of love. Yet you have a lovely and a godly wife with everyone in you who is always praying for you. But you want to be a son of perdition, wasting the effort of your dedicated and spirit filled wife. Hmm. Madam, please don't stop praying for him until God will save his soul because his soul needs to be saved. And you, Mrs. Animal Shabu, thank God you have repented. But please, stop wearing tight clothes that reveals your body so that men will desist from lusting after you. Thank God you have repented. But at the same time, always reveal every illegitimate affair being given to you by any man. Don't hide them. Resist and reject them outrightly. And you, ministers, the Bible says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, O God, and know my thoughts. If there is any wicked ways in me, whatever wicked ways, wicked lifestyle, sinful lifestyle in you, you better confess now before it is too late. Repent. Repent. You ministers defiling the sheep under you. Repent before it is too late. You ministers eating the church money, diverting it to your personal account. Repent before it is too late. And you ministers using shams to run the church. Repent. Repent. You ministers using mass hypnotism to call the people to the church. What for? Why are you doing this? God is no respecter of persons. Repent before it is too late. And you, Pastor Shukor, the measure with which you have given to Pastor Natalie, I'm returning back to you. You are hereby suspended. And Pastor Natalie is hereby reinstated to continue his service unto God with holiness, purity of heart, and righteousness. While others should go and make up yourself to serve God truly out of your heart, not out of what is pushing you, ego, and pride of life. This is my verdict as confirmed on me at the end. Did you believe Pastor Nat's revelation? That we are not among the righteous ones in the church. Why don't I believe him? Can't he mention his name and even his wife? As part of those who need their repentance? I believe him. I believe him. Maybe because I love women too much. Lost has finished me. Who will I tell my problem now? Can I can I say it out to others? Ah they will castigate me too. Oh Lord, please deliver me. Deliver me now. Today's service is full of intrigues and revelation. Hmm. 
that a pastor can preach very well and motivate people does not mean he is right with God. That a pastor is very eloquent does not mean he is right with God. Pastor Shukbo can speak good English and very profound. Ah. Where is the righteousness of God in the church? Where is the righteousness of God in the world? Ah. Pastor Shukbo. Pastor Shukbo. Defiling your members whom God has put under your care. Oh, you messed up. You messed up. Huh? Is it God that even put him there? I put him in that position. But you messed up. You failed. You failed. Huh? Many so-called pastors have failed to discharge their pastoral duty to the sheep they are supposed to shepherd. I know you as my father, my God and my Redeemer. You are my savior and you called me into the ministry 35 years ago. Lord, do you still know me? Am I still your son and minister? Please, Lord, confirm me to you. Confirm to me because I need to know. Lord, I need to know. Please, confirm my status to me. I need to know. Sister Shola, good evening. I'm here with my pastor. She's not at home. And as for me, don't bother. She's not around. Who are they? The pastor and the lady. They left. What did you tell them? They left to another tomb and they shouldn't bother praying for me. Ha. Look at this man. Are you and where is the key? Pastor! Pastor, please don't go! Please! I'm at home! You this one, give me the key! Wait, you can't see them. They can't come into this house. You had better go inside. No, they are my visitor. They came for, for, for deliverance and salvation of our souls. I don't want salvation. Then? I don't need deliverance. Then allow me to. Allow me to. <laughs> we have had our packs together. If I perish, you perish. I will not perish. I will not perish. I will be saved. I will be delivered. I will be. I will receive salvation. See, you drive car of any choice you want. You go to any country that you want for shopping. Don't you want that? Let me tell you, I am not ready to go back to that old life. We cannot repent for this business. See. I have tasted poverty and I don't want to go back there again. I don't want to go back to poverty. We cannot leave this business. This business is for us and we cannot give our life to Christ. Pastor, please go. Leave us alone. Let us enjoy our life here on earth and let us end up our life in hell. Eh? Go. Pastor, go. Go. Leave us alone. Ah. All I want is I want to be delivered. Anyway, the Bible says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man should open to me, I will come unto him and I will stop with him. Sir, man, if you open the door of your ass to Jesus, he will come in and stop with you. 
God bless you. It is well with you. No, 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 go, go. We don't want to. Ah, ah. I think you need to go back to school so that you can differentiate between bribery and favor. You simply collected bribe from someone to deny others who you told you have closed. And you call that favor? Is that favor? Huh? Tell me, is that favor? You see, favor is what someone didn't deserve, but being given freely. But now you have just collected bribe. And you call that an act of favor. And the people you initially demand saw you while you were collecting it. Mr. Jabidu, you are fired! Oga, please. I won't do that again, please. I won't do that again. Mr. Jadidu, Mr. Jadidu, please leave my office and stop sharing crocodile tears. Okay? You have cheated other people. If you are showing favor, don't you ever collect money. In fact, don't let money be a motivating factor for helping people. It is time that to bribe. Please, just leave my office. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> if the righteous as cast be saved, more shall be the lot of you, the wicked and sinner. You shall die! Jesus! Jesus! What? What happened? You called Jesus? Yes. Yes. They want to kill me. He saved me. I've seen Jesus. He said he died for me. I've seen Jesus. I've seen Jesus. My daddy in the Lord, I have this confession to make. Sir, please pray for me too. My mind is always full of evil intentions. I've, I've always wished that Pastor Soplos be transferred or dead so that I, I can move to the top in our parish. I wanted to be the head pastor at all costs. But, but now... Now that the revelation shows that I was not among the righteous in the church, I want to repent and let God have his way in my life. I'm sorry, sir. It was my inordinate ambition and love of money, my envy, my pride that pushed me into this. I wanted to be in charge of the money of the parish. Just pray for me. I don't want to miss heaven. Please. Please. Ah, what is wrong with you all? Is it strong the way we give you an opportunity to serve in the vineyard of God? What have we done wrong by putting you in a position so that you can serve God? Oh, you have all messed up by disqualifying yourself to serve God in holiness and righteousness. No wonder. No wonder God said he didn't know you. 
you all had better go and resign instead of going about with unknown identity of God. Go back to Calvary to genuinely repent. Oh, generation of Saul, the son of Kish. Ah! When a so called child of God does not have a genuine salvation, but jumps the queue to becoming a minister without sanctification and proper dealings with the old man. Your behavior in his or life, he or she will end up becoming half big, controlled by Adamic nature to misbehave and to fulfill the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Such cannot be a very useful vessel in the hand of God, but will remain a bastard unless they genuinely repent. Hmm. Now is the time for every genuine call minister of God. To begin to ask themselves this sincere question if they are still in faith. Now is the time for everyone called of God to confirm and reaffirm their status with the Almighty God if they are still His Son. Now is the time because many have gone in the view of Balaam, error of Balaam thinking they are still standing. Many have become abandoned like Saul who was still prophesying among the prophets and many have become like demons who love this present world oh what a shame Fumbled as a servant of God. Have you too messed up as a child of God? As a servant of the Lord? Now is the time for you to genuinely repent because God is seeking for the righteous that he will take home unto himself. Then, who are the righteous? They are those who have given their life to Jesus Christ completely. They are those who have made Jesus Christ the righteousness of God in their life because Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God in the human life. There are those who shun sinful practices and run away from sin. The righteous are those who live a pure life. They have no skeleton in their cover. They are transparent to God and transparent to human beings. Who are the righteous? They are the ones who have clean hands and a pure heart. There are those who have given their life to Jesus Christ and live according to his word. Because Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God in them. He makes them righteous. Do you want to live a righteous life? Do you want to be among the 20 righteous if Jesus comes? Then now is time for you to join me in prayer and repent of your sins genuinely because Jesus is coming for the righteous, the holy, and the pure. Lord is 
is coming soon. All ye Muslims, God is coming soon. All ye people, Lord is coming soon. Coming soon. Tomorrow, maybe too. Tomorrow maybe to it.